welcome to the Spectrum Show Live number two, subtitled Right Said Shredder Back on the Road. <laughs> if anybody remembers the last time we did a live show, we got some comments from people there saying, I didn't know Right Said Fred was still touring. <laughs> so I think we should make a start and as we don't have news on the show anymore, you have gathered some news for us. I have, thank you for people who submitted it. So first item is obviously about my game. As I said, there's a demo outside. I announced it last year and still haven't finished it. Neil's been doing a great job, not just composing music, but uh, helping me improve the game by playtesting it. Uh, if anyone wants to approach me afterwards and do some playtesting, I'd really appreciate it. As I said last year, it's kind of very, very reminiscent of Advanced Wars, so anyone who like games like Laser Squad or Chaos or any of those, I'm sure will enjoy it. This is the game where last year you asked for somebody to do the graphics, somebody to do the sound, somebody to do the sprites, <laughs> somebody to do the code. Same game? Yeah, it's the same game. It's, it's taken them a while. <laughs> And the next bit of news is the tip shop. Anybody who must remember or must know the tip shop, they need help. They've not had a lot of submissions for a while. I use this all the time when I'm doing the show. Um, you will find pokes, you will find cheats, you will find hints in there. And the guy, Gerard Sweeney, that's doing it is um, desperate. Not desperate, he just wants some help. He needs some more tips for newer games, newer titles. Everybody knows there's new games coming out all the time. So why not have some tips in the tip shop? What do you think, tip shop? Tipshop's brilliant, I use it all the time. Um, on my channel I do walkthroughs and the amount of times I've gone to Tipshop just to get some help with those is, I'd say uncountable, but basically every time I've done a walkthrough I've gone to the Tipshop. Uh, yeah, um, as Graham has just announced... Don't have thunder. Yeah, <laughs> he told us to keep it really, really quiet and I thought we had a world exclusive, we were going to be first to break this news and then Graham says it in the previous talk, he's working on the sequel to ZX Nightmares. Anyone who's read ZX, Night ZX Nightmares will know it's a really, really good book. Uh, ZX Dreams, I'm sure these are gonna be games he really loves and likes and thinks are the best on the spectrum. Um, so that'll be well worth a look. Although I do notice that Minor Willie was both on ZX Dreams cover and Nightmares cover. Well, it should be because Manic Minor is uh, a dream. Jet Set Willie, mm. No, it's Jet Set William Bull. <laughs> Is it? Okay. It'd be interesting to read the, the dream part of it. And the last bit of news, uh, Midnight Brew have released, or have previously released, a set of games on real media. Alan, I don't know if he's in anywhere. Alan? No. He may be selling them. He's still out there selling them. Uh, highly recommended titles. There's some really good things there, like the excellent L Lunar Rescue RX and Ooze and you can get those on the, one of the stalls over there and say hello to Alan when you do. Okay then, shall we do something serious? Yes. Last year we did hardware demos, Paul, and it didn't go very well, did it? It didn't. The heart rate monitor failed to report any heart rate, so... <laughs> <laughs> not very good. So, we have, it's a spectrum show, so we have to do something on hardware. I think we should do a hardware top ten. Uh, there's a lot of hardware out there. There's literally thousands of pieces of hardware. I think we need rules, as always. Go on then. I think we should only include hardware that was available before 1999. Yeah, okay. Not specifically for the Spectrum. Um, there must be, sorry, must be specifically for the Spectrum, and not things like serial printers or Centronics printers or joysticks or anything like that that could be used on many of the machines. Okay, we'll see about that one. <laughs> and no mods required. So, for example, you can't rip out a chip or add an AY chip and say, yes, that's that's great, inside making modifications to the Spectrum itself. Oh, take the, um, take the circuit board out and put it in a different keyboard. Well, we'll think about that. that. I, I, think, I think that would just that. <laughs> okay. And we're going to have a little um, vote for each one of these to see how popular each one of these were. And I'm going to start with the ZX Microdrive. A fantastic piece of kit that was a year late in arriving. It brought mass storage to the Spectrum. It was better and faster than tape. 80k of storage per tape and up to eight drives connected at once. And the commands to run it were already built into the Spectrum's ROM. On the downside, the tape wasn't that good a quality and over time it stretched, which gave you more storage, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> but you couldn't load anything from it. Double-edged sword, now. A double-edged sword, yes. 
Yeah, the one thing I'll, I never had a micro jar. I know you did, but the thing I really like about it is its look. It is so in keeping with the spectrum. I don't know if Rick Dickinson designed that, but if he didn't, whoever did design it was thinking about his spectrum design when he did it. For the 48K. Yeah, yeah, for the 48K. A bit from that. Of course. On to yours then. So, this was my childhood joystick interface, and this for me was the, the best joystick interface for the Spectrum. We'll see about that. The RAM Turbo. It, it had Kempston, it had Interface 2, it had Cursor, it had one of those little ROM slots in the top where you could put the Interface 2 ROMs as well. The one picture had a reset button, mine didn't unfortunately, but I was, I think I got that the Christmas after I got my Spectrum for Christmas, and never looked back really. Any game that would support a joystick you could play if you had one of those. I also like the design feature of the little loop uh, on the picture which stopped you plugging in or unplugging your spectrum power uh, when, the, uh, when the interface was in. Yeah, uh, there is one drop downside of, of design feature. Those grooves in the top are absolute dust magnets. <laughs> wouldn't believe it. Um, it. We forgot to do the vote. Who had a, a microdrive in, back in the day? Okay, quite a few. And who had a ROM turbo, RAM turbo interface? Oh, bless. <laughs> <laughs> the microdrive is winning. The RAM, the RAM turbo was for the elite. That was it. Okay. <laughs> On to my next thing, the VTX 5000 modem. I picked this because it was many people, including myself, first step into the world of communications. If you got this, you connected to Micronet 800, you had email, you had um, chat lines, if anybody wanted to go on those, you had forums, and you could download tele-software. Um, it was expensive, uh, initially, $74.95, but it came down as the time went on, and for me, it was just that, that first step into the World Wide Web, even though it didn't exist in the form that we know it. It was an objective desire for me. One question, Paul. Yeah. Was yours on top of was your spectrum on top of the modem like that? It was, and strangely enough, if anybody can see in the picture, there's a little on-off switch right below that, and it was very easy while you were typing a response to an email or something, you hit that, or, and it took you offline. Undocumented feature. <laughs> Another documented feature. <laughs> Wasn't it hard to type with it like that? No, it made it easier. So the documentation said. <laughs> Are you ready for yours? I am ready for mine. Concon. Now, if I, the RAM Turbo was brilliant and the best, but this was an objective desire for me as a, as a kid. I really wanted one of these. I thought, design-wise, as a programmable interface, it looked great. One of my favourite features of it, though, was that if you had a joystick that would support it, it would support two buy buttons. Now, that would have been great for certain games. Either you could have the second fire button for jump and just map it to up, or you had up for jump, and we all remember how bad up for jump was. Or in a game like Attic Attack, where you need two buttons. So with Attic Attack, yeah, if you select a joystick, you can run around, you can fire, but to pick up the objects, you've got to pr press the keyboard. Simple shit. If you had one of these, you didn't have to do that, you'd be using two buttons for that, so. It was a massive chunk of metal as well. It was very solidly built. Yeah. And it was nearly as big as the Spectrum, but you, you say not. Well, I thought for what it, when, I remember, I remember seeing adverts for it, thought it would be huge, and I have, I think I've got two now, and I was actually surprised at how small and neat it looks. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell, tell you what's interesting, it's got the pass-through port at the front as well. Um, which it if you, sticks up, doesn't it? Yeah, which means if you put something like a dim MMC in there as well, <laughs> it, sticks, it sticks right up. Smart card works really well because it like comes back over your uh, spectrum. Very good. Who had one of those? One, two, three. They're <laughs> uh, yeah, not even popular today. Okay, I'm going to win this one here. The DK Tribes <laughs> keyboard. That breaks your rules, Paul. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's not modifying the spectrum, it's adding, adding to it. Taking some of something away and then adding to it. That sounds yeah, like one of my Go, go. <laughs> 45 pounds. Rule um, violation. I, I think it's the iconic keyboard of the Spectrum. I think most people have one of these than any other keyboard. It was easy to fit. Uh, the version 2 had a full size spacebar, version 1 didn't. And I think uh, anybody that was getting a Spectrum to type out games or use it for business, this was the keyboard of choice. You know I like the saga better. <laughs> having, having seen your saga and uh, tried it, I, I think I like the saga. Yeah, you were always going to have a keyboard, were you, Paul? It was just which one. One thing I've noticed, your uh, picks are all 
Quite a bit more expensive than mine, Paul. Yeah. You have expensive tastes. <laughs> okay, who had one of these? This is the winner. Who had one of... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, people can't afford the uh, hardware that you pay. Okay, on to yours then. Now, I think when it comes to people who can't see, this might be the winner. <laughs> <laughs> Although, it doesn't quite make your rules, because you could use it all the reviews. Um, okay, it was rubbish. <laughs> it looks it looks great, it looks ergonomic, it was it. If it was really uncomfortable to use, the thumb button at the top, you had to have your thumb in exactly the right place to use it, and it was uncomfortable. The trigger button, you would get blisters from, and it hurt after a while. It didn't have a ridge down the back. Yeah, it had a ridge down the back, back, again, made to give you blisters and cut your hand, but it was ubiquitous. It didn't have one. I, I must have gone through, actually, so, Ram Turbo, one of these, Daily Thompson's Decathlon for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't last very long. It's, um, it's got four suckers on the bottom that's specially designed to become unstuck at the critical moment of any game. <laughs> Um, actually, I stopped trying to play Elite with it very, very quickly. Uh, turbo, turbo uh, fire feature, which could come in very, very useful for, for some games as well. But it was just, I mean, they were cheap, they were cheerful. You'd buy one, well, you get one for Christmas, you break it after a few weeks of playing Daily Thompson, and then... Throw it away. You, yeah, throw it away and get another one. They were... Um, environmentally friendly as well. <laughs> <laughs> it was the 80s, don't no care about the vi environment in the 80s. So who had one of these? Oh. <laughs> I think that's I the rest of it. <laughs> okay, if you're having a joystick interface, I'm having a joystick interface. Oh, 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 oh. That, now that's an object of desire. Yeah. Ten functions, ooh, uh, missus. Slow motion, joystick ports, RS232, composite video, centronics, reset button, sound through your TV. Expensive, yes, but come on. It look... <laughs> have, you got, have you got a picture of it in the spectrum? Because Not in my head. Yeah, it, it, to, me, to me it almost looks like too much. It's just, it's just too much pole. Did, 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 you, did anyone ever use all of those functions? No. Did anybody no. actually have one? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you got one, you'd be really, really pleased, wouldn't you? And, well, uh, mine doesn't the slow motion to work on mine. And actually, I'm, I'm guessing it goes completely on the back of the spectrum as well. It does, so yeah. I, I guess it fits flush to the top, which would make it look pretty good. Um, yeah, I. No. I didn't even know about it until we started putting this list together, Paul. <laughs> I can't really say a lot about it. Okay. It does look good. It does. The current micro speech. This was another one that was an object of desire for me. I. I borrowed one of a friend at school for one night. And the first thing I tried to do was get the booty um, scuba dive game to, to work, and I couldn't. So then I think I loaded up, I think Attic Attack was supposed to uh, support it, but crashed when you put it in, so that wasn't very successful. And then I tried to make it say words. Yeah, made it made it swear. Yeah. I didn't. Oh. <laughs> Everybody else did. I was <laughs> really I, I got one and I got it because I'd seen the film War Games and I wanted to make my spectrum sound like that. Does anybody remember how it sounds? Yeah. You might not be able to hear this. Hello, I am absolutely <laughs> there you go. How authentic. Did it, have, it must have had the same chip in as a speaking spell, because it's something <laughs> Moving on, and for me, another iconic piece of kit. The ZX printer. This might have a lot of votes. <laughs> oh, did we get votes for Kura? Yeah, Kura. How, how many people had us black? Oh, mm, okay. Yeah. Anyway, the ZX printer. Commands built into ROM, very easy to use. Looks fantastic, even though it was designed for the ZX81, and it was a great little add-on. You could just print out anything. If you're running, uh, playing The Hobbit, you could print out um, listing uh, the commands as you went and the responses. And like me, if you wrote your own basic games, you could print out the entire listing on what was affectionately and still is affectionately called bog roll paper. <laughs> yeah. Was that was that paper expensive? I can't remember. Because it was aluminium coated, wasn't it? It was aluminium coated and it made a beautiful smell when printing. <laughs> and, and I think I remember you telling me if you turn the lights off, you get a, a, a light shield. Yeah, because it uses sparks to burn the aluminium off. If, you, if you've got one, turn the lights out and look, it's like a little firework display. Very worrying when you first see it, but it's marvellous. 
So who might have one of these? Uh, ooh, not bad. Have you still got mine? Uh, yes. <laughs> you can't have it back. Oh, are you ready for your last one? My last one. Again, not one I had. Objective desire. And... I know you could use it to power games, I know you could use it to back up software, but the reason I wanted this was I would get my Crash magazine when this came out, and you had one of two choices. You could either type in a massive long listing with loads of hex code that you were bound to get wrong, or you could load up the game, press the button on your uh, multiface, and just type in one pork, and you get infinite lives. So it was actually for poking games that I really wanted this. I wanted to be able to use that those little tiny easy to do pokes in Crash instead of having to do massive long listings. I got it to do something completely different, and it wasn't pirate games. I got it to go into games and change the names in the high score tables to myself, so I could show my friends <laughs> I was a king game player. <laughs> <laughs> you never did that? No, I, I, I never did that, but I don't see the point, because your friends come around, see the high score, and say, oh, let's see you play, and then... No, no, too long to load. <laughs> too long to load. <laughs> Who had one of these? All right, quick. Okay, not so bad. That, that's our ten between us, but there are, yeah. we must mention some honourable mentions. Yeah. Things like all the interfaces you could get, the Disciple, the Kempston, the Discovery Opus, Kempston Pro, Alpha Com 32 printer, the majority, vast majority of other keyboards, the Spectrum, sound samplers, there are endless ones. And I suppose everybody's got a favourite, but those were ours. Yeah, I'd glad to see the uh, Saga keyboard on there. And actually, I'm surprised neither of us chose a disc interface. Well, they were very expensive back in the day. Oh, so I didn't have them back in the day either. <laughs> so, shall we have some fun? Yeah, let's have some fun. Okay, this is me having fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I'm researching the show and looking for games to review, I find some stinkers, I find some real poor games. But, a lot of other YouTubers have done videos on bad games. But what I also discovered is many of these bad games have really bad loading screens. So, so what games have bad loading screens as well, yes. <laughs> So what I thought I'd do is I'd skip through and see what you think of these, Jeff. Um, because, you know, I've picked some that I think are terrible. And, you know, let's have a chat. Come on, inflict them on me then. So, <laughs> okay, the first thing I think about this is, now I see why cartoonists give their characters three fingers, not four. Four fingers are obviously hard to draw, aren't they? I uh, don't know if you've got any artists in the room, but four fingers must be hard to draw because they look wrong on that figure. <laughs> I just want to say if there are any artists that did these back in the day in the room, I apologise <laughs> in case I insult somebody. But that guy has got a very severe haircut. And he looks like he's going to poke himself in the eye with his thumb. For <laughs> the other thing as well, I don't, I don't get this, and I think we'll see a few examples of this, is why do they use the spectral font? I hate it. Does anyone like the Spectrum font? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> just, me, just me and that gentleman down there. Yeah. I'll buy you a pint afterwards. The funny thing is, you quite often get these games, and in the game, they have a different font. But, yeah. And those angel things, I, they remind me of something from Dynamite Down, I think. But just, yeah. Anyway. Uh, they're quite well drawn. Okay, Bra but, brace yourself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe you take it back from the spectrum. <laughs> now, I'm not sure what the gentleman, I think that's a gate he's trying to climb. Or, or has he just been booted over it by the bull? And what is he supposed to be having in his hand? A sword? Or is, whatever it is, it's not there. I suspect we're going to see this a lot, but... I wonder if someone spent a very, very long time doing draw and ask commands plot to get draw, plot yeah. and draw to get some of these uh, figures that we're going to see on this. I, I know, I know what he's doing. He's taking a selfie <laughs> <laughs> on, on, on Twitter. Look at me. Maybe he's supposed to be sitting on the gate. Um, and the, yes. It's an invisible gate. Okay. Um, the ball was actually the ball itself wasn't too bad. You could tell it was a ball. Okay. <laughs> Maybe this is supposed to be a comedy one. Yeah. Really? So, yeah, man, man's decapitated by tiny helicopters. <laughs> and it, it, to me it looks like Popeye after a bad night out. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of one of the characters, I think, from 1080. Right. Spectrum font again? Yeah, Spectrum font again, they're blown up. Quite often they do that thing where they blew it up as well. I think you could get some software to do that. Yeah. Um, 
interesting perspective. Um, I think that's a, that's a uh, look into the future with flat screen TVs. Yeah. <laughs> in 1984, there wasn't the, 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 the tube would stick out a mile mm -hmm. from that. Are you ready? That wasn't too bad, though. That's not oh. too bad, that one. Okay. <laughs> I might quite like this one. Now, before we say anything, it took me a very, very long time to work out what this is. <coughs> I know it's a paint pot, but that purple thing... It's a paint roll, Paul. I know. It took me a long time to work out that that's a paint roll. I suppose it, the yeah, colour clash it's in the title, but... Yeah. Well, ironically, there isn't a lot of colour clash on that uh, screen. No. Yeah, um, and they, the, the pin pot reminds me of, it's, is it Mr. Chips from Catch oh, Rising? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe they stole it. <laughs> and talking of plot and draw commands. <laughs> That's an interesting one, isn't it? There's something gone very wrong with the hair at the, uh, the right-hand side. Is that hair? <laughs> you know, you know what? I think that's another face. That's the nose and teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Dracula. You're quite right. Yeah. And Hummer House of Horror to avoid copyright with Hammer House of Horror. <laughs> yep. And I suspect the game was a horror to play. I didn't. At least, at least the Hummer and Horror aren't written in the Spectrum Pot. Um, this is Pot and Draw. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, there must be a lot of Pot. And, someone could spend ages doing Pot and Draw for that. One. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Not so bad. However. What, uh, the, there's tiny men and either huge men and tiny tanks, or he, tiny, tiny tanks and huge men. I'm pretty sure with the uh, easy to find graphics taken from the game itself, aren't we? I don't know. Nice sprite scaling. <laughs> 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 Maybe those things at the back are really, are really, really, really huge. And the spectrum font again. Oh, have you used the uh, circle command for the sun? Everybody used the circle command. You didn't do that. <laughs> but it never filled it in, did it? Circle command, the radius getting slow, one pixel bigger every time, it wouldn't fill it in. Great if you wanted to do a picture of a record. <laughs> but not much else. And this one is just for you, Jeff. Yeah. Oh, I like that one. I thought you would. It is. Um, the game doesn't. The game doesn't actually load that as a spectrum screen. It does what Manic Miner does and just writes it straight into the attributes. Which so, is good, nice quick one. A nice shadow. Um, there's not a lot you can say on attributes. I mean, considering it's just done in attributes, I actually think that's good. It's it's hard to pick any fault with it. The shadows look really good. Yeah. Um, oh, his, his, his leg, his left leg and foot, that, that looks painful. Other <laughs> <laughs> um, than that, I like that one, especially, I mean, let's face it, that would have been nice and quick to load because it was just attributes. If, if you'd have to wait for that, that yeah. would have been a bit with, disappointing. With some of the previous <laughs> screens, if they drew line by line, like the Spectrum does, you, you would have been thinking, well, well, probably what you would have done is try to hack the game, take the loading screen out so the whole thing loaded quicker anyway. Yeah. Okay. So, Emperor Palpatine's gone back to the Wild West and is using horse lightning on four horses by the looks of it. And his, his, his wheel is about to fall off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think okay. someone's learnt how to do uh, angle user definable graphics and then went to town and then thought, ah, oh, I'm not going to be able to do the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> the horses are pretty good, though. They're not bad. Spectrum font again. And I, yeah, um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I don't want to say that every single time. But, and the actually, uh, the horses have done pretty the well. Horses there's, are not there's a tangle of legs over on the left there, isn't it? <laughs> um, right. The, the next one we've got. Going to carry no, on? I was going to say for those of you who read Crash, I'm trying to do this a bit like Simon Butler does his screen screen <laughs> section. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm succeeding, but there you go. Right. The, the next one comes with a warning. Shield your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Why, why use one colour when you've got... <laughs> Let's use it as many as we can. It's <laughs> randomly thrown about. So sometimes less is more. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do you know what? We, we're here at a Crash 2023 event and we've not even mentioned Crash magazine. Um... Yeah, so when we were talking about putting this together, I think I think I said, Paul, that we want to do something crash related. And with Ollie passing away last year, I thought the best thing that we could do is kind of a tribute to him would be to look at some of our our favourites and possibly some controversial uh, crash crash covers. 
So we did that, we went through the crash covers and we picked out some of our favourite. I think the first one just The first one is mine and this one really drew me in when I walked into a newsagent and saw that on the shelf. The what now in the eyes is sort of hypnotic and it made me want to buy it and I did buy it and I've still got my original and I think it's just a, a superb cover in, in general with lots of, uh, the lighting's very good and the textures are very good. You know the one thing I don't like about this one, don't you? It's the what now in the eyes. <laughs> I think it's a spectrum for Look into uh, my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, yeah, was this Crash 4? Was this the fourth cover? Yeah. Um, yeah, another, another good one. I mean, let's face it, the first three, um, there was, was, was something to follow. I like the way, it's with a few of these covers that um, Ollie tried to work in like the rainbow of the spectrum, you get the multicolored piece and then there it's kind of in the magic in the hand. And face is great, Ollie was never better than when he was drawing the figures really. And, but I don't like the ice anymore now. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's marvellous. This, this was one of mine. This holds a special place in my heart because this was the cover of the first Crash magazine I got. Issue six, I think, was the first one I got. Um, I really... It's, who's read Crash Legacy? A few of you. So if you, if you read that, you'll know that actually this, at least up until as far as Crash Legacy goes, this was only one of two covers that used the photograph. This and the Matt Edring one. Um, but actually it was artwork and then the photo photographic technique was used to get the 3D effect, so the background and the foreground being blurred. Really like the way that the spectrum's kind of damaged to say 3D as well. Really I didn't know that. This is, when, you, when we were rehearsing this and you said that, I said, what? Well, I just thought it was a spectrum with bits cut out of it, but now he said it, it actually says 3D. Very yeah. topical with the Indiana Jones, it was kind of of its time. Who else didn't see that? I'm not on my own. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, but it explained in the manga bag. <laughs> <laughs> just me then, and just me select other people. Another one of your favourites. <laughs> Sorry, another one that you like. I can't yeah. say anything. Well, so, there were, I thought we had to um, include one of the controversial ones. So there were a number. There was the Barbarian one that was really gory. Uh, I'm not into gore myself. There was this one that apparently was put on the top shelf with a certain other class of magazine. Uh, and I think it was a Hannah Smith one as well uh, that caused a bit of controversy, but we really had to include one of them. I, I really like this one for a few reasons. One, there's, you've got Spectrum Rainbow at the back. Two, Ollie was never better than when he was drawing figures. I, I think Ollie, Ollie's artwork with figures was absolutely superb. Yeah, you could say the subject matter is maybe a bit controversial, but it's, when you when you look at it, you think, did they really put that on the top shelf? <laughs> um, um, but again, I mean, the, the detail in both the figures is absolutely fantastic. And of course, another 80s theme, uh, the sorceress at the back is wearing something very reminiscent of Return of the Jedi and Princess Leia's costume. Or is this another thing that only I see? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I think... We looked at the controversial ones, I didn't like the gory one, because I'm squeamish. Um, so, this, this was the pick for me. And when you look at the things that other magazines were putting out similar, around a similar time, you've got Sinclair User that had strange covers, you've got your Spectrum which had people on them, and again, slightly odd, and, interesting and your Sinclair afterwards that did have some good covers but I don't think they came up to the standard uh, of Crash. No, um, when you look at these compared to the old work that Oliver Frey did it's just a completely different class, it's our class. So this is one of my favourites, um, I like anything that's got starships shooting things and I think this is a really good example. Um, it's obviously taking um, something from the trench scene in Star Wars yeah. And I didn't notice, this is another thing I didn't notice about this until Jeff pointed it out. The, the trench is made out, out of cassettes. So if you, if you look into it, mm. and with, with a few of these, I think you can look at it superficially and get what it is, and then spend a long, long time looking into the image and seeing more and more detail. And with, it, with this, you can spend ages just trying to pick out games that are uh, used to make the trench. We've got things like Arc Attack, Nebulous, Kong from Ocean, Sorcery. I've written them all down so I can remember. <laughs> I can 3D Lunar Attack, Cold It's and The Hobbit, and many, many more. So 
Yeah, absolutely superb. And I think, I, I said it, Oli was never better than when he was drawing figures, but the other thing, and again, this is in Crash Legacy, that he loved doing was drawing spaceships. He really liked doing action scenes. And there were certain other things he didn't like, which we'll come to next. <laughs> <laughs> I love this cover. I don't like it. I, I think this cover is... Obviously, it's tying with Jack the Nipper. I, I just think this just gets the whole essence of the game. In, in one shot, again, it's another one of those ones where the more you look at it, the more detail you see. There's a lot to find in this, lots of things in the background that you see when, you, when you're when studying it. Um, and it's just absolutely superb. Ollie's packed so much action and so much character in, character into that central track figure and he in, in the game and it just completely comes out to me what i think is even more impressive and again going back to crash legacy is if you read that ollie hated doing this didn't like doing cartoony covers and i think it's even more impressive that he managed to get something so good with so much detail when he hated it it must admit if i do something i hate i tend not to do as good a job <laughs> it's uh, something i like another spaceship one Again, I think this is attention to detail on the spaceship is yeah. fantastic. The action scene is fantastic, and the colours again. Yeah. Um, anything with spaceships and shooting? Yeah. Again, uh, no surprises though. Actually, action, 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 oh, there is. There is a surprise in this one. Yeah, there, there is. It's the faces in the back of the, the landscape. The yeah. Faces again. I something think, I didn't spot. Um, yeah, but obviously. Time side side notching. I think this crash got further on. There were more tie-ins with specific games that were out around that time. But yeah, um, superb one again, action one. I, and it, it's one of those ones again. When you look at, you see the more detail. You see the faces. I think it's it's hands or fingers at the bottom as well, kind of making the the peaks that the spaceship's going through. The imagination of that man <laughs> yeah. to come up month after month with covers and just throw things at them like that's amazing. And then we come on to the Christmas covers. We had to have a Christmas cover. Yeah, this is. I think this is my favourite Christmas cover. Um, it's got Father Christmas. It's got snow. It's got aliens. It's got a spectrum. One of, one of the things I like about the Christmas covers is Father Christmas who was nearly always on them, giving presents to aliens. It's nice to know that it's not just us that enjoy Christmas. <laughs> not just us that got yeah all over the universe. People, beings, whatever you want to call them, are getting. Spectrum related things for their Christmas present. Right. We sat here today. Yep. The Spectrum has come a, a long, long way from when it was first released in 1982. Yep. And I thought about this long and hard, and I was thinking if in 1982 we had things that we have today on the Spectrum, we'd be thinking, well, that's just impossible. That's not a Spectrum. That's some sort of wizardry going on. And yep. I thought I'd go through a couple of examples. Go ahead. So the first is multicolored graphics, or brightly coloured graphics. This is Sewer Rage, and we, it's not multicolored graphics as such, but it's very clever use of character graphics. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so, uh, you wouldn't have thought that was impossible back in the day, though. It's very good. One of, one of the things I like about modern, a lot of modern games is that they're so smooth because they're clear compared to some of the older games. Mm. Um, so we're onto a true multicolored game then. El Stompo. Now this yeah, is not special. <laughs> if you had this back in 1982 and somebody said, "Look, this is a Spectrum game," they wouldn't have believed you. There's no color clash. There's more than um, two colors in any. Four, is it four by four for Nevada? It's it. It's it. But that's what. Yeah, it's four by four for Nevada. But on the Spectrum itself, it was eight by eight attribute block. So and there's more than. You can only have, well, the foreground and the background colours, so two colours in every block, and this has more than that. Which I, I agree. Like, people have said that's impossible. They would have thought, you'd, you'd have shown that to someone, it was like, if the Sam Coupé had come out, someone would have probably thought it was an early Sam Coupé game or something like that. And then we've got Snake Escape. Again, it's got jerky graphics, but it's got so much colour thrown in. Yeah. And, and what you can see with the... Was it an apple or was it a tomato? Was it between you? Um, you can see with that there was more than two colours per, per attribute block there. It has to be so. Yeah. And then we're getting on to large sprites and scrolling. This one does look a bit like Midnight Resistance. So there were a few games later on in the, the spectrum was uh, live that you did see things like this. It's got a lot of things going on. It's got yeah. cloud movement, parallax scrolling at the foreground, very clever use of attributes. 
Um, good action as well, good game to play. Yep. And then for me, we come on to the creme de la creme. Yeah, this is, this is amazing. So back in 1982, with character movement, 8x8 eight eight pixels, beeper sound and something, what do you think about this? This is beeper sound, or is it here, right? Here, right. Um, well, in 1982, someone would have said, that's not a spectrum for the music. <laughs> it's it was happy. Yeah, absolutely. So, another another thing. I mean, I think I think people have programmed this for so long and learned so many good techniques since back in the day that, like, just the smoothness of the graphics and everything else, and how much how much you can throw around on screen now is absolutely amazing. So we've got a, a comparison from 1982 <laughs> and 2000. That is Ground Attack by Silversoft, and a lot of people thought that was the be all and end all scramble clones, and nothing could beat it. Um, oh dear. <laughs> and keeping on the graphics theme, we've got nothing. Loading screens. Now, every time I see something like this, I always search for Attribute Clash. Me too. And some of them are beyond belief. It's, it's impossible, or it would have been, well not, it isn't physically impossible, but if someone had come up, if you go back to some of the screens we saw earlier, yeah, compared to this, it's it's just another level, isn't it? And again, those who read Crash, of course, Simon does four of these every every month, and some of those are incredible as well. This this one's amazing. I mean, this one, you, it's hard to see. I don't look for colour clash so much as where the attribute blocks start and finish, where they, where each block is. And sometimes you can see it, and it's hard with this. When, when some of the blocks that use the bright attribute, you can often tell them. But, but with this one, I think, I'm pretty sure that moon is, has got the bright attribute on it. It's really, you can't, you can't really see where those blocks are with that. And Gift of the Gods are re envisioning of the uh, loading screen or the cover art. And again, fantastic use of dithering to yeah. get, um, like, uh, so it's additional colours. You've got um, red and yellow to, the, to sort of produce a, an orange effect. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's and again, the use of bright on, on the armour. Rather than impossible, I'd say it's absolutely amazing. And I'm, I'm guessing, and if, if anybody knows, if when we do the questions, you want to mention it or something like that, I, my other thought is that the tools that people use now are probably PC-based and probably give you a lot more help at doing this kind of thing than something like uh, Melbourne Draw back in the day. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You've got ZX Paintbrush that allows you to do things on PCs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, people using Melbourne Draw and, and Paintbox and other things yeah. Yeah, will have terrible difficulty. Um, again, fantastic use of dithering. You, you wouldn't have believed that, that that was a spectrum screen back in 1982. No, I think this is one that Simon's actually talked about as well. So, no. yeah. so we've gone from <laughs> 1982 to 2023. Yeah. Quite, a quite a difference, quite a quite difference. difference. And the last remaining thing is sound. So in 1983 we had this. Anybody guess where it comes from? No, it's Alchemist. Early, I was going to give a clue earlier, oh. imagine it. Oh, sorry, sorry. So the Spectrum had a one channel, one bit square wave beeper with no volume and noise. And today people are pushing it to its limits. We can get up to nine channels, various modulations and envelopes, digital sounds, drum noises, samples, and different volume levels. And this is just the beeper, I'm not talking about the AY chip here. Um, one gentleman in particular, Mr. Beep, has excelled in this. Um, and admittedly, the machine is just doing the sound here, so you're not going to get graphics with it. But this is a sort of short compilation of what the Spectrum can do now with just that one bit of beeper chip. So, 
always ask, are you sure that isn't the use of the AI tool? No, that's definitely yeah. the He's the, It's produced three albums that are freely downloadable, and there's I think it's about 10 or 15 tracks on each one. Again, the Spectrum isn't doing anything else but producing music, yeah. so you can't use it in a game. But there are some games that have got fantastic music, usually AI, like you yeah. say. Um, my my guess with that is he's not even using the intro to time the music, he's doing it purely off the clock cycle so he can get loads and loads of channels into the, to the beat. But definitely impossible back in the day, you'd have thought. Yeah, I would have thought that was impossible. <laughs> some, some things me meagerly absolutely amazing, some things definitely impossible. So the ZX Spectrum, what a fantastic black box full of magic trickery. Um, I heard a rumour the other day, and I've not heard it before, in that when Aircon engineers first got their hands on it and opened it up to see what was happening, they were absolutely flabbergasted at how the whole thing worked. There were bits plonked in to slow things down, there were bits put in to speed things up because the components were cheap and they didn't match each other's frequency, and they just had no clue how the hell it worked. But it did work, and it's still working today, and it's enough to bring hundreds of people to this event and thousands of people around the world logging onto websites, going to forums, going onto websites, downloading games, and even writing their own games. And I think that the machine now must have earned itself the status of legend. It has to be. Definitely. Uh, let's face it, we're all here because we love it. And, I, and on that thought, I shall leave it. So thank you for coming today, and it's good night from me. It's good night from him. Thank <laughs> you.